Hi, I'm Jared Logan. Welcome to my guest room. This is GM Toolbox from the Stream of Blood, where we talk about taking rules from one tabletop role-playing game and putting them into another tabletop role-playing game to make it better. Hi, I'm Jared Logan. Welcome to my guest room. This is GM Toolbox from the Stream of Blood, where we talk about taking a rule from one tabletop role-playing game and putting it into another tabletop role-playing game to make it better. <laughs> No, you're not having a brain aneurysm. I really just said the same thing twice. You see how redundant that felt? Well, that is a common problem in tabletop role-playing games. How often does this happen? Your player is gonna make a skill check, they roll their dice, they fail, and then they look up at you and go, can I try that again? Because if there's one thing we know about players, it's that they would like to always succeed, never fail, and face absolutely no opposition from enemies or any challenges in the game. Boy, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? That sounds dumb. In general, you want to tell your players yes to almost everything they ask or request. Often there won't be an obvious reason in the story of the game why they can't try a skill check again. But rolling the same thing over and over is dull and it sort of takes away the stakes of rolling in the first place. Remember that scene in Aliens where they're furiously trying to weld the door shut as the aliens come down the hallway toward them and then uh, they, they fail at getting the door uh, completely welded shut so the aliens just kind of decide to walk more slowly down the hall and so then they try welding the door shut again but they don't quite get it again so the aliens just sort of kind of stop and kind of wait on them to kind of finish doing that and then they succeed do you remember that scene i don't either because that would suck if every roll can be repeated why roll at all eventually the pc will succeed so what's the point you need a mechanic that explains your policy on repeating roles and makes them interesting i mean a lot of games have a mechanic like this they say well, when you roll the second time, you take a negative two, you take some sort of penalty, but that's boring and it involves math and it's hard to remember. I mean, why are you getting worse when you do something the second time? It's kind of like saying, yeah, you can have another attempt to catch up with that purse snatcher, but this time you have to wear high heels instead of sneakers. Call of Cthulhu 7th edition has solved this quandary with a very simple, an easy to remember rule that makes repeating roles more interesting. It's called pushing the role. Here's how the push mechanic works. When a player fails a role, they may choose to push the role, taking a second and final attempt at the role. Fucking hell, 82, I missed it. I, 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 I'm gonna push it because I've got a, a 70 for medicine. They must describe what action they are taking to try harder to complete the task. How are they upping the ante in the fiction of this role? If they succeed at their second attempt, the role is a success, as normal. If they fail on their second attempt, something horrible happens. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I rolled a 98. If the role fails, the rules state, this gives, quote, the keeper free reign over the outcome. And that's when the ship shifts and suddenly all of that unmoored cargo starts rolling toward you. That includes things like damage, loss of equipment, isolation from the other investigators, even being captured by the enemies. In Dungeons and Dragons 5e, if your player fails his second attempt at a perception roll, the enemies get a surprise attack. In Star Wars, a second failed piloting roll takes out the hyperdrive. Now your ship can't even jump away from the battle. And in Mage the Ascension, maybe a second attempt at a magic roll that fails automatically inflicts a terrifying paradox backlash. It works really well because this is a game mechanic that has been around long before tabletop role playing games. It's called Double Enough. <laughs> The excitement of rolling the dice is added to the excitement of what might happen in the fiction. Suddenly that second roll 
is fraught with all of these potential horrible consequences. You could lose big here or you could win big, big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. And you, the game master, are enjoying it because your player has sort of given you permission to pull out one of the dirty tricks you have up your sleeve. One of the horrible monsters or terrible traps that you've had cooking the entire time but haven't gotten a chance to use. Because here is a really useful bonus game mastering tip. The Game Master is allowed to have fun too. That's it for GM Toolbox. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We stream three times a week on Twitch with the Stream of Blood. So check that out if you'd like to see some of these techniques and ideas in practice. And if you've used some of these ideas or you have your own techniques you'd like to share, please sound off in the comments below. Until next time, happy gaming, you son of a bitch.